I forget what we're supposed to do Q&A, so I'm just going to raise All right, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, so, I mean, in case you all don't know, I'm the Kaltura admin on campus, so I'm about to say what might seem blasphemous, but have you thought about, in terms of um, the students and the videos they're creating and kind of um, the interaction back and forth and commenting, have you thought about upping the stakes a little more and having them post these publicly so that they have the potential to use these as portfolio pieces. So use YouTube instead and also that way you could tap into uh, good things that people often forget in videos like attribution and you know citing things and saying and actually declaring a Creative Commons license and all that kind of crazy stuff. Um, I just having done these kinds of assignments I find even more valuable when I'm like, oh, I'm going to show this to potentially future employers or something like that. Have my you? grandmother. Or my grandmother, yeah. So that's, a, that's a really good question. And I would say that um, this assignment happens in a very packed part of the class where, where this sort of stands alone as we're teaching you to do this so that you'll be able to do something similar in the future. Um, we're teaching them the sort of technical capability because many of them have not moved from simply doing a PowerPoint to doing a PowerPoint with recorded audio to putting the PowerPoint with recorded audio in a place somebody can find it. Um, so that technical part of, of it is important. And then Caitlin comes in and sort of gives them a completely new worldview about how you do a presentation without filling it full of bullet points and, and uh, words that people, that you could speak. So there's a lot, and we do this in three weeks. In addition, and you know, in a one-credit class. So, um, so, so you what I would say was version three. I saw yeah, it was version two. What I was yeah. saying was so, you are absolutely right that that's uh, that could be a, a really good uh, approach to this. Well, then um, it solves the problem of comments too. Because that, yeah. It's automatic and you can do two. And then you can have your grandmother's comments in with your colleagues and your <laughs> classmates. The, so yeah, that was the issue with of like finding everybody's comments and finding everybody's channels. So a little bit for, I mean, we thought about that for, um, but for a little bit of ease of finding comments and finding each other's YouTube channels was let's all have it on one spot. Yeah. And, so one, then, and one of the graded elements of this, graded, one of the required elements of this is that they comment on at least four of their peers' videos. So being able to count who's yeah. commented where on YouTube would be much more challenging than just having it in line in the, um, in the Learning UW Site. So that's the main that's the main reason why we really wanted to keep it inside the um, the learning management system. But um, all these terms that I'm learning from working with these guys uh, that I never thought I would use. Uh, just a really quick uh, example of how you would do this in a desire to learn uh, or in a Canvas uh, discussion. When you click on that, you see the little Cultura uh, icon. Icon. <laughs> Sunburst, whatever you want to call it. Um, you click on that, and it. If you have prior uh, videos in Cultura, those will pop up. Uh, if not, then you can add a new one from your computer. Uh, in this case, I won't bother, but uh, we can pick this one, which is Caitlin's presentation on how to make online presentations. <laughs> Uh, and uh, post it and it will show up nicely in the discussion and then people could click on the reply thing and com make comments uh, on it. So it's very, very straightforward, uh, relatively easy to use even for students who are, who are challenged. And that allows you to add text above and below. Like you yes. can add not just a video, but you Right, and right. the video and the context of a larger. And in fact, for this this assignment, we do ask people to say, "Tell us who your audience is and why you know this video works." So, and I believe the default behavior in Canvas is to not include the previous post. So, <laughs> <laughs> so so this will be easier this year. So uh, that's what we did, and and how we solved our problems, and that's how you post in Cultura and Desire to Thanks very much. So Any now, questions? We. <laughs> Yeah, if you have any qu quick questions. Yeah, yeah, quick one here. Do you provide any guidance to students on how to make the content accessible, closed captions, transcripts? 
We have not done that yet. We have not. And that's, but that's actually a really good uh, question because one of the learning goals for this, uh, this part of the class is these are people who are going to be working as conservation professionals in organizations around the world. And we're trying to get them to think about accessibility in terms of distance. But I think accessibility in those other terms would be really good. Is there, it, it, this is a question, is there a central location where some of that, some of the technical aspects of that are, is laid out that we could point them to? Yeah. Uh, you can talk to me, but then also there's the McBurney Center on campus. Uh, they're the central student accessibility <coughs> place. Um, and FYI, I mean, they're probably really close to having accessible videos as well because, it, I mean, I'm not trying to diss their uh, oratory skills, but they're probably reading off of the script. If they're reading off of the script, even just posting that as a transcript mm -hmm. breaks down a lot of barriers for accessibility. And yes, there's some technical hoops you have to jump through to get that in as captions, but even just having the transcript. And that's Morton Gernsbacher's suggestion, and she just reads, mm -hmm. she puts her script together, and she just reads it. She's very good at not coming off as reading from a script in your video. She just has developed that thing. Lane, uh, I've messed around with this a bit in the past, and what I've done is I've taken my Kaltura video, uploaded it to YouTube. YouTube will then close caption it for me. I can take the closed caption file from YouTube, pop it over here, and you're good to go. And wow. Kaltura, or YouTube does a really kind of a funky, it's not the best closed captioning, but I'll give you the basics. And then you can go fill in the blanks. And it has all the coding already in there. And so then you're, you're really, it's almost like WYSIWYG editing. It's really simple. And wow. so it's, it's, I mean, you, take, you, you have to take a little bit of time to figure this out, kind of get the little quirks you have to do in a certain file format, like it's SRT. But you have to do it in a certain file format, and then you can pop it over to Kaltura, and then it'll read it. Um, that's how I've closed captioned Kaltura videos in the past. And so it um, might be something to think of that. It's a kind of a do-it-yourself, lower, easy, medium, maybe, level. Jump. Oh, look, I can't help but notice that next week we've got a thing on universal design. <laughs> where Ruben Mata and Michael Moore are going to be coming from the McBurney Center and talking about stuff. So I'd encourage everybody who has any insight on this uh, to come back and share that insight next week. So. Um, just, as long as Lane went there with YouTube and this, I was just going to say really quickly, you can actually embed YouTube videos in Kaltura, which is just craziness, right? So you can actually have your videos both on YouTube and in Kaltura at the same time. Can you put those inside Vimeo like a turducken? Yeah, and then <laughs> a video turducken? So if, if, we, if we could do that with Caitlin's wonderful video about how to make a great video, mm -hmm. then yep. we would... Really it would be a singularity. <laughs> <laughs> it might cause a rift in this case. Yeah. Any, any other <laughs> questions? Yeah. Um, I don't know who to direct the question to, but is there any kind of file space issue, like file size? No. And that's, that's actually one of the reasons why culture was huge for us, because we, we first tried, when we first tried this, we were working with DCS and we're like, okay, we, this is, here's what we want. And like, well, you know, there's this tiny size maximum for desire to learn posting files. So, well, and uh, sorry if I, I cut you off, but That's like okay. with the file size question, uh, when I hear that, I hear, I want to post really long videos for my students, but pedagogically speaking, well, right. yeah. you want to pinpoint specific examples, use clips, yeah. um, work with some consultants to figure out how to slice things up in Kaltura, which you can do pretty easily. So that way you're like, in this hour-long video, watch this whole thing. Instead of that, just say, here's a five-minute clip. Yeah. So you might be wondering, boy, it sounds all super simple, but how simple is it really? This is where you get to work on your own and dig into it and figure it out. Um, we've got pretty didactic instructions, step-by-step, -step, how to do this. And as you start getting comfortable with the tool, start talking to your neighbors and working on the harder challenges on the back side there. And Caitlin and Rob, I think, will be available to walk around if you have any one-on-one -on -one questions for them. That'd be great. And we're also leaving this up at the end. <laughs> this is this is where Caitlin um, works. And if you uh, seriously, it is really the writing lab for design, and for, particularly for students, both undergrad and graduate students, it's an amazing resource. And I would say underutilized, but growing.
underutilized. <laughs> she, what she did. <laughs> <doing? laughs> We're talking about bus in the seats. We're fine. <laughs> 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 Although I don't know if that's going to be recorded. Do you want to watch over your shoulder? Yeah. Do you remember me by any chance? I used that in the AGMC uh, uh, oh, like right. every day for a summer. For which project? <laughs> yeah. Recording online videos. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Julian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's. Uh, no. I love the DNC, but that was one thing she did. No, I'm no, sorry. Like, I'm through the lecture. No, I got to go to your staff very well. Actually, Chris, Chris came and uh, he was at work. Oh, our, but he was designing. So, Rosemary's perfect. Yes. He was here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I still see him occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you get to that interact with Pat Steinberg? I think so. Yeah. I was just talking to him. No. Oh, you might be thinking of. Uh, uh, okay, um, you're going Rob Howard. He was, he was um, yeah. the director of the. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
maybe go with that. Although you could just have them close to the Bible and not the first version. So it was a little group of smaller people. Yeah, they have them. I mean, even smaller than kindergarten. Yeah. And then they would just peer review the first time to go. You could make it so they could be peer reviewed. Very, very small. She's not, but. I mean, technically, if you just say because she's on the older end, the group is oh, the okay. main class. Yeah. 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 Like her, all of her, like yeah. her two girls, and then they're like born in August, so they're great yeah. at her. It's, there's a lot of ways to get the taller than they are. This is the yeah. the joy yeah. and problem. Yeah. 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 In terms of making the presentation, the presentation I was going to bring up a relatively new feature in Kaltura. We're actually. You're, you can upload an entire slide deck now, and by slide deck I mean uh, PowerPoint or PDF. So what you can actually do is if you have audio or video, and you know, you've uploaded it to Caldera, there's a button that says upload PowerPoint slides, and it will take, if you have a 10 minute long clip, Really and questions. you have a PowerPoint with 10 slides. Yeah. It will Hit upload the PowerPoint and evenly distribute the slides every minute. That's good. And then you can go in and adjust it to make the slides show up at the correct time points in the audio or the video. Interactive video quizzing. Yeah, it's just drag and drop. That, that's uploaded. Drag yeah. 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 it. Yeah. When the actual transition is live, it doesn't talk as well as it Yeah, you go, I know. It would be nice if it did it. Create the Oh, does it? Directly. Were you having them do the screen capture in culture? Yeah. Well, no. But not in culture. Like if they were on the back side, I would just have a message recording. Don't talk to the video. There is capture space. There is. Okay. Yeah, and how to do it. The thing about that is, right in there, so they go add to Granite Capture Space, they pull the point, it looks cool, but it's really nice. So, one of the ones that we're trying to be in your game, we're trying to get them to figure out how to do this. It doesn't really have any detail, but I really would like it in Canvas. It's just a participation point. They can click on it and you get a point to click. Yeah, I know that it's like you can't get it if they get it, but they don't have that software on it. Right. Having Kaltura, well, that's where like, maybe like so that they could do the dumb I mean, version of it. That's where like which is super easy, easy but then when they're you know, yeah, posted, yeah, one yeah. YouTube, uh, they can do that or wherever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. When, they're, when they're posted in yeah. 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 Ghana, I like that for expressions. Yeah. All right, yeah. and content yeah. yeah. is always going to be an issue when you're doing like yeah. talk about what we're doing here. What uh, what's happening? How's it working? How's it not working? What are you thinking? That back table there is already all very familiar with this already, I presume. So you guys are talking advanced stuff? We're, we're talking how many ways there are to do this and making sure that the way, the way you do it meets your pedagogical Ah, uh, good. Okay. <laughs> how many ways it can go wrong? And how many? And the, way to the flip side, how many ways can it go wrong? We have a lot of upset skinned cats. Yes. <laughs> as, as is appropriate for a skinned cat, I think. Yeah. Oh. I have to look up the derivation because <laughs> I'm a cat lover, so. <laughs> Here's a good thing. Are there nine lives? Um, so what, what, what are the issues? Or, or, or let me introduce the idea of, so why Kaltura? Why not YouTube? That, I'm glad you asked that question because I was going to ask the same question. I bring that up in all my consultations, um, or also um, probably didn't know, but you could also, uh, UW Madison uh, Google Drive has unlimited storage and huge individual file size. If you upload a video to Google Drive, it actually offers you a bed code for the video that you can put in. Can you add closed captions to that? Uh, yes, and you can add closed captions to that as well. Um, and then you can have the sharing set so that anybody with UW Madison thing can yeah. log in and see it and nobody outside of it can or. Yeah, so in my consultations, if there is an intricate setup for who is doing video and who's like the content owner of the video, who's the technical, like I actually edit the video, if there's a complicated relationship on permissions, I often don't recommend Kaltura <coughs> permissions get all wonky and crazy. Also, I just use Google Drive because then you can go in and uh, do folder permissions like you normally would on online pod storage systems. 
Also, I talk about YouTube because if the point is to make it more public and viral, don't use Kaltura. Use YouTube, right? So. And this we saw when you guys were like, we can't click on it and show it within PowerPoint right. because you got to go through the, cal the, the, the B2L wall, the Canvas wall. And even when you're logged in, like the PowerPoint will open up a new window and then you have to log in on that window. I mean, like the barriers. A lot of that, I find that to be kind of Microsoft PowerPoint wonkiness. So a lot of times what I'm doing in my course this semester, we just use Google Slides and I put YouTube videos in the Google Slides and that way it's all online, you don't have to download and use PowerPoint. This is the console I did yesterday. So. And these are the things that I think are like, they're small things, but they add up. Oh, yeah. And every little barrier that you put in between your student getting the content and experience, you know, doing the verbs of whatever it is that you want them to be doing, every little hitch stops them or slows them down sometimes. But I, I, hey, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're the speaker. No, no, no. I was going to ask. I was going to ask the question. Go ahead. Oh. oh. I, in defense of, of Kaltura, and, and I think you raised some really good points. Which I love that you're defending it, not the ones. I know, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Where's that come from? the campus admin? Because it's obviously. <laughs> no, but. It's a I was, I, I've really been in, um, one, uh, just to be, I, I really struggle with legal issues sometimes because they're yeah. so boring. <laughs> but for my is, uh, uh, it, it is, uh, you know, something that you do keep in mind, and there is that wall of protection that if yeah. it is sensitive material or students don't want to have their names out there, you can still require them to put a video up because it's behind the safety firewalls and yeah. in, 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 uh, Kaltura. Also, the other thing, speaking of cats, what happens in your zoology course and you're showing a picture on lion behavior on YouTube, what's going to pop up after that video is done? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. just the stream of cat videos, right? <laughs> and so, oh, I'll click on that. I'm going to click on Grumpy Cat. I'm going to click on a cat playing with a ball of twine. Uh, that's the type of, it's, it's just a distraction where Kaltura can, can take that right out for you. No commercials, no advertising, no like shiny object syndrome uh, on the peripheral. So it's kind of that nice kind of streamlined focus. And that's what I really did like about it because I'm a little bit scatterbrained sometimes too and I want to click on so, Grumpy Cat. So. And so that, that totally depends on what the faculty member wants to do in the course, yep. right? I can see pros and cons to both. The pros with the YouTube is you're actually having your students engage in a real world context instead of an artificially created barrier mm -hmm. and wall that you have in your classroom, right? And adding to academic content online where they're already on the <laughs> I can see potentially doing like a behind the firewall when you're doing your iterative drafts and then the final one they actually post to YouTube yeah. once they put in the appropriate attributions and captioning and yeah. cited their Creative Commons license. Sort of like the Wikipedia you know, I, I articles. I like that you said that in the, in the presentation about like the third draft being closed caption online yeah. viral-ish. Yeah, <laughs> viral-ish. Viral. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's good that they both are available. I mean, yes, yeah. like that's the. Right. That's the really and you bring up a really good point. That's why I actually brought up Google Drive. Google Drive is on the official license, whereas YouTube is not on campus. Even though you can log in with your Risk account, let's not even go there, right? So it's uh, Google Drive is even the legal protections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What about audio for that? Because I know the Caltera currently has problems with the audio player. That it, you know, the size of the player. Um, comes out as a video size, even though there's supposed to be an audio player that's the thin. There is an audio player, you just, it's in bed code, but yeah, uh, what about audio how? For, for the Google Drive, how did, does that have a player as well? It does, I haven't tested it. Oh, okay. uh, I imagine it's, since it's based its video player on YouTube, it's still the big YouTube player. Yeah, well that's, what, that's actually what happens with Kaltura, the audio player. Yeah. So you have to big. manually resize it in the in the iframe code. So I know it's it's not a big deal. But. Julie, you got a question? Yeah, um, I wasn't sure in YouTube were you able to do like a screen capture lecture? Uh, you used to be able to. They turned off that functionality. You now have to find an alternative to do okay. it. So you're going to That's back. really nice about the Kaltura. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because sometimes you know you can't create a fancy feature like film for every lecture. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you. <laughs> Quick, quick and dirty, right? Yeah. yeah, they used to have it. So if you're on a Mac, QuickTime X is awesome sauce. <laughs> it does it in like three clicks or something like that, right? If you're on Windows, you have to struggle to find some stuff. Um, but we could have more in-depth conversations about screen 
casting tools if you want to at a, a later time. I have my favorites that are free. So. OBS. OBS is the awesome. It's called an open broadcaster software. It allows you to do things like you can set up your stage and you can actually include, you can resize different parts of the video. So if you want your head to be big, you can make it big, you can make the desktop smaller. And you can also have queued up uh, videos that you already have sitting on your uh, desktop or images and have those show up and you can move them around and stuff. And it's all free and awesome. Hmm. So. Uh, if, so another one of the things that Kaltura just sort of put in the plugin for Kaltura is on the back side of your page, the in video quizzing. Yeah, interactive video quizzing that works really well in Canvas where you could do multiple choice quizzes in context in the video, have them pop up at certain times, and then it connects with the Canvas Great Book if you want to do a little bit of assessment. Okay. So maybe not for the student created videos, but for instructor created videos and interactive um, blended classes, flipped classes, things like that would be good. Do you know if they're going to add um, short answer to the in video quizzing? Uh, long answer? They yeah. have a lot of changes short on Short or long them. answer question? Short or long answer question. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't exactly fit the kind of what they're going for with the video quizzes, where it's supposed to be quick, formative assessment that gives the immediate feedback. You can't exactly get that with short or long answer. Uh, they are developing the tool. Whether or not that is on the roadmap is something I can't speak to. So. And there are things out there for YouTube as well, so that you can have embed quizzes within YouTube or, or whatever. That's what I'm Rosen. The other thing I super love is H5P, but that's getting into a other world of <laughs> cool awesomeness. Yeah. We were going to have one on Pressbooks the first week, but... Uh, this is just H5P, not Pressbooks, yeah. Do you know what else is coming along for Kaltura? Oh, what is coming along? Um, in terms of accessibility, and the most recent player, they've updated the uh, captions to allow the end user to make the subtitles or captions look the way they want it to. Mm -hmm. So you could do custom styles if you know you're if you're colorblind, you can make it a certain color and make the background a different color. Mm -hmm. um, I need to actually, it's on my to-do list to test that player and make sure it's working well enough and then push it out to production. Uh, is there anything else? I mean, interactive video quizzing was the really big push that just came out. Um, Do you know if there's anything maybe in the distant future of like students being able to comment in like uncertain time points? Um, that is something we've brought up every time we have conversations about the interactive video quizzing. Um, whether or not it's on their timeline, I can't talk to them. Yeah. But I have, I have if you want to. For that. If you want to do that, you should check out H5P. Uh, it's really cool. Um, there used to be another tool called Zaption that might have done that, but that tool got shut down. So. Uh, the fun of tools getting shut down. It turned on. <laughs> so, yeah. so FYI, though, I did want to. I was actually talking to Rob and Caitlin before the session started. Uh, if you have your students inside of Kaltura using the commenting features inside of Kaltura, you can actually put in a time code and comment on it. And then when you put in a time code, it act it turns it automatically into a link and right. will hop the video to that time code. Yeah, yeah. that is a cool thing. So you can say, I really love how at one minute and thirty seconds you talk about the you know the horrible situation that fish uh, overfishing is in right now. Yeah, so that's, that's essentially what I was getting. I was thinking more like a SoundCloud where you can oh, yeah. see where where there are comments within the timeline. So mm -hmm. like you can see if there's a big discussion around a particular mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. point, right? But but that's actually pretty close to what I was what I was mm -hmm. getting at. Yeah. That Unfortunately, that only works in, in YouTube. Somebody's got the plugin or extension or something for YouTube to do that. Yeah. It's got Google. Frames on the bottom of the of the, the player. Yeah, but I do like that. That's, that's pretty cool that you can jump right to the time point. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts, questions about Kaltura? All right. <laughs>